Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Genesis. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. This is the word of the Lord. Too often the scriptures seem a bit short on the details that really interest me. What I'd like to know is precisely how did God call Abraham to pull up his stakes and head for a new land? Was Abraham sitting on a boulder, gazing at the sun as it sank below the horizon, and God spoke to him in an audible voice the same way I'm speaking to you now? Or was Abraham deep in prayer when God's voice emerged in his mind? No matter how many times he tried to wipe the thought from his consciousness, it kept resurfacing. If his spiritual connection was dynamic, the internal voice he identified with the divine may have been the channel through which he heard this command. Or maybe the land around Abraham's home was no longer the lush, verdant fields it had been when he first arrived. Staying put was becoming a risky endeavor because things were parched and his sheep had little land to graze and he was stewing over what was to happen next. He felt the building pressure of this situation pushing him to look for better fields. And he felt that that was the way God was instructing him to move somewhere else. <coughs> or perhaps Abraham heard God in a dream. <coughs> One night when he was asleep, his conscious mind was at rest. A powerful dream convinced him that his maker was wooing him to a place with flowing streams and olive trees and vineyards that blanketed the hills. Then again, maybe a stranger passing through the land told Abraham that he was heading west. He'd heard the prospects were much better there and that's where he was going. And the words of that stranger just kept echoing in Abraham's ears and he believed God was summoning him off the lips of a stranger. Our passage does not indicate precisely how Abraham heard that call, but deciphering the voice of the Holy One is always a challenge. One reason that makes it difficult is that we simply do not expect to hear God's voice. We may think that God spoke to people in ancient times, but no longer speaks to people in a postmodern world. Or we may think that God speaks only to a handful of select people. Abraham, Moses, the prophets, Mary, Jesus, Francis of Assisi. But God doesn't speak to just anyone. If I stood in the pulpit today and told you that, uh, by the way, God spoke to me yesterday, I suspect the personnel committee would ask me to take a little time off, <laughs> maybe get an appointment with a psychiatrist. It's important to keep in mind that God communicates in ways other than an audible voice. 
God speaks to us through the scriptures, which clearly spell out to us that we're to love others and to treat others the way we want to be treated. We're commanded to forgive, to be generous, to serve people in need. Sometimes, though, it's difficult to figure out how to take these commands and then use them in a specific situation. And sometimes we just turn a deaf ear. But we know that one of the primary ways God speaks to us is through the scriptures. As I suggested in those different avenues through which Abraham might have discerned God's voice, God also speaks through prayer, through the events of our lives, through other people, through intuitions, through dreams. The question I think that looms for most of us is, do we really want to hear God's voice? Perhaps we fear the upheaval it might produce. Now, for most of their lives, Abraham and Sarah lived as nomads. They never stayed in one location for any length of time. As their animals grazed the land, they just kept moving from place to place. But in their later years, when the spring in their step was gone and the arthritis was making them stiff every morning, they finally accumulated enough wealth to settle down. However, today's passage informs us that when Abraham turned 75, after he and Sarah were comfort, comfortably nestled into their rocking chairs, God said, gather up your family, get all of your belongings together, because you're going to blaze a new trail. In his younger years, Abraham would have responded, terrific, great, where are we going? This is exciting. But unless he was desperate, it's hard to imagine that at this stage of his life, he embraced this summons with enthusiasm. If we approach the story of Abraham as a history lesson of an epic figure, then we manage to keep this story at arm's length. We have nothing in common with a desert nomad that lived 4,000 years ago in the Middle East. Yet the story of Abraham is the story of every person. Time and again, God calls each of us to yank up our stakes and to head for a land that we have never visited. Abraham serves as the prototype of one who leaves security behind and takes the risk of following God into an unknown situation. It's like the day Jesus ran into Peter and Andrew and James and John and he threw out the challenge to them, follow me. They threw down their nets and they followed Jesus and they embarked on this amazing adventure. But somewhere in our middle to late years, our enthusiasm for a new unknown chapter begins to diminish. We become more cautious. Wiser, but a lot more adverse to change. Rather than seeing a call to a new land as brimming with exciting possibilities, we start thinking of all the potential trouble. However, too much caution drains the vitality out of life. Too much caution drains the vitality out of life. Looking back on your life, can you detect any moments when God was calling you to venture someplace you had never been before? Can you pinpoint a moment when God led you to a new person who changed your life? 
or a new opportunity that led you to a place you never imagined? Are you still open to God's nudges? Or have you lost your sense of adventure? If you study the scriptures, it becomes clear that our Creator is discontented with the way things are. God envisions a very different world. A world where cruelty and poverty are no more. A world where injustice and strife are no more. Has the security of your routine cemented your feet to the floor? Or is it possible to regain your courage, to regain your sense of adventure, and to go where God wants you to go? Like Abraham, when we're open to the path that God has in mind for us, we can be a blessing to others. People who answer the call to become a church officer or a Stephen minister embark on a new journey. People who respond to the challenge to mentor a child from a neighborhood very different than their own embark on a new journey. People who sit in conversation with a homeless person and really listen and hear about the person's life embark on a new journey. People who help a refugee family resettle in a safe place embark on a new journey. The creator of heaven and earth does not want our days to be a copy of the previous ones. God encourages us to lean into the future and to move forward with eyes wide open for new discoveries, for new people, for new adventures, and for new avenues of joy. Now admittedly, some of you have been thrust on a journey against your will. Life was rich and fulfilling just where you were. You had no desire to pull up your stakes and venture to a new land, but your loved one died. And you had no choice but to begin a new life. You had to learn to do things that your mate had always handled. You had to reach decisions without your trusted ones serving as a sounding board. You had to learn how to live alone. It was far from being an exciting adventure. It was more like a forced eviction. Some of you were shoved onto a new path when you went through a divorce or when you lost your job. Yet even when the road is not one that anyone would choose, God still helps us navigate new territory. God does not direct our every step or control every decision. We have the freedom to choose what we will do. God whispers in our souls the best possibilities given our circumstances. Are you still so upset by what happened that you continue to fight the future every step of the way? <clears throat> or are you open to a new land that will slowly come into view? While the scriptures tell us of God's activity in the past, we never get the sense that God's trying to turn the clock back or to freeze time in the present. God is the energy of the universe, always propelling things forward. Now there is security in staying put. 
in sticking with your same routine, same job, same friends. Security is something we need. Yet security can also be the chain that holds us back from new ventures. One of the great frustrations that counselors have with their clients is when they continue to do things the way they've always done them and yet they expect a different outcome. A basic fact of life is that you must let go of where you are if you are to arrive someplace else. You must say goodbye to what is familiar and journey into the unknown in order to reach new territory. And it's never too late. Peter Marc Roger was forced to retire from the Royal Society in London, a body of some of the world's greatest scientists, just shortly before his 70th birthday. He could have relaxed, he could have rested on all of his many accomplishments. Instead, he wrote the world's first thesaurus. When he was 75 years old, after spending 28 years in prison, Nelson Mandela became the president of South Africa. Beethoven wrote some of his greatest music after he was deaf. When she was 76 years old, her hands became so crippled with arthritis that she could no longer hold an embroidery needle. So Grandma Moses decided to take up painting. Lent is a season on the church calendar when we're encouraged to engage in self-examination. It's a time to ask ourselves, where in our lives are we failing to live as God wants us to live, and where are we failing to love as God wants us to love? How can we reawaken to God's voice? How can we recover our sense of adventure? The summons of God is neither coercion nor chains, but instead promise. It is a challenge to take the risk, the risk of faith, trusting that a new and hopeful future will emerge. Could you be at a pivotal point in your life? How might God be nudging you to embark on a new adventure?